live from the Washington, D.C. area. It's the Inside Scoop and we'll plan it. All the ecology news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's your host, Executive Director of the Emerald Planet, Dr. Sam Lee Hancock. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock, President and Executive Director of Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We're coming to you live from downtown in Taipei, Taiwan, looking at the movement towards organic foods, all natural foods, fruits, vegetables, and also the use of tea as far as a way to reduce obesity, increase energy, help with sleep, and at the same time to make it part of the diet and not just a beverage. I have a gentleman sitting with me who is from the Taipei Medical University. This is Dr. Uh, Yan Su Ho, who is a distinguished professor, uh, director of Graduate Institute of Medical Science in the College of Medicine at Taipei Medical University. And Dr. Ho, thank you for being with us on Emerald Planet TV. Thank you. We're glad to have you here. Uh, we're going to jump right into the subject because we've been talking about food and exercise and all that with uh, some of the other guests. But you've really been doing research as far as something that's called EGCG and the health benefits of that from green tea. Tell us a little bit first about your institution, and then we'll talk about the research and the health benefits uh, from this uh, ECGC. Uh, I'm from uh, Taipei Medical University. Our school is found uh, from uh, 1960, so I have more than 50 years uh, history. Uh, our school have uh, nine college and three affiliated hospital. I am affiliate uh, in uh, medical college and I'm right now the director of the Graduate Institute of Medical Science. I focus on basic research uh, about, uh, actually I'm focused on uh, cancer research, especially on uh, breast cancer. So uh, initially we found that uh, in Taiwanese breast tumor tissues, uh, there are uh, uh, a molecule uh, we call alpha-9 nicotinic receptor which is overexpressed in breast cancer cells. So we focus uh, to identify some kind of uh, antagonist which is specific against uh, the alpha-9 nicotinic receptor and find that uh, uh, the T gradient, uh, the T EGCG uh, is actively uh, inhibit the alpha-9. So we start to uh, study the about the prevention effect of EGCG. The interesting thing about uh, Dr. Ho is that you have something that's uh, very traditional and ancient to Taiwanese and Chinese society, which is tea. And yet you're finding as we're progressing through the 21st century, very modern scientifically based societies like Taiwan, is that this very ancient, as I always have called tea as an herb, now has real implications for the spread of modern diseases. Tell us why you started to look at tea as maybe a source, a natural source, to address a very complex disease called cancer. Uh, of course, because uh, as we know that uh, cancer uh, is caused by different kind of factors. For example, the diet, the toxic, uh, we always uh, approach, but if we want to prevent the cancer formation, the diet also the easy to approach. So I find that tea is easy to uh, approach. In addition, because uh, tea is the traditional beverage in our life, so I'm sure that that is a good uh, candidate to uh, research for uh, cancer prevention. Uh, looking at modern society, uh, many people are not only just like it, but they're actually hooked on what we call sugary drinks. And we'll leave that alone, sodas and other kinds of things. And uh, yet, as far as the uh, green tea that you have, 
uh, in virtually all cases, particularly in Taiwanese, Chinese societies, is that you do not use cream or sugars in that. It's a natural, a very natural tea. Uh, classically, why did tea start to be used in that fashion instead of the more Western use of milk and sugar in tea? Yes, uh, in traditional uh, way, we prepare the tea always just a, a, a pot. But right now, uh, because commercial uh, is very convenient, so many uh, commercial uh, product uh, is available. So uh, let also change uh, the young people's uh, life. So they always buy the, co uh, the commercial tea uh, instead of uh, prepare the, the tea by uh, themselves. Yeah. Now, when you're studying uh, tea, since it is a very old and ancient uh, part of the diet in Taiwan and uh, Chinese society, is what was it? Was there any special approach that you had to take for studying tea, or is it uh, all scientifically based? and you move forward from the standpoint of this is something very new and very different, and now we have to find out what this new and different uh, you know, uh, medium is, even though it's only been in our culture for five or 6,000 years. Uh, yes, uh, because uh, in the ancient time, we cannot study uh, deeply because uh, we, uh, the detection method is uh, uh, low level, but right now we can use a lot of uh, high-tech technology to detect the uh, bio biological function in our body, in our cell, or even the molecule. So we can use the molecular biology method to detect the actually the, the effect of T component. So we start uh, to re research, re research, right? So 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 let have some innovative uh, results we can get. So in in my lab, uh, we found that uh, even you use the traditional tea, but we can use uh, the novel method to detect or to, uh, to, to, to investigate the right way through the molecular biology uh, method. Looking at the uh, research that you've been doing, uh, what are some of the findings that uh, maybe ha came very quickly, particularly uh, talking about breast cancer because that's, uh, you know, a very uh, dangerous disease for females. And, of course, now they're finding that even males, because of maybe diet and the environment, are now faced with breast cancer. So what kinds of uh, findings uh, did you uh, come across that could be used very quickly instead of, just continually years after years after years of research? Uh, because uh, our study finding that uh, smoking can induce breast cancer, but everybody never know what is the critical molecule which was involved in breast cancer formation. So in my lab, we found that smoking induced uh, breast cancer formation uh, should be induced through the nicotinic receptor. So we ask whether the nicotine can induce cancer. Our answer is yes. So that is easy for us because we can focus on such a molecule and we can target the molecule. Uh, so we identify the T component which is e eff effectively uh, to induce uh, such an inhibitory uh, activity, so we can reduce uh, tumor formation and we also can uh, prevent uh, smoking induced breast cancer. So that is practically can work. So I'm exciting, uh, we, can, uh, we can prevent uh, smoking induced disease through a very easy uh, manner to prevent uh, smoking induced uh, kind of disease. Thank you. Now, looking at uh, smoking in society, uh, many uh, modern societies, even though smoking was acceptable 20, 30, 50 years ago, uh, now many people just absolutely don't accept smoking at all and anywhere. And, of course, uh, more and more environments are smoke-free. How do you think 
that movement itself combined with the T can help to greatly reduce the negative impacts, particularly in women with breast cancer, but also the cost to the national health program of uh, these more natural ways, giving up smoking and combining with tea. Yes, uh, because smoking uh, is difficult to stop in some body. So we cannot ask each one to success their smoking behavior, but we can enhance their uh, defensive uh, activity by, uh, for example, by tea, because tea can reduce the number of receptor in their cell body. So it will reduce the binding of uh, nicotine to their, 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 their cell. So uh, it is very effectively. So uh, on the other way, uh, for passive smoker, uh, maybe some kind of, uh, s some people are smoking, but uh, around uh, him, uh, anybody uh, didn't smoking, but they also uh, affect by this guy. So we can reduce the risk uh, by drinking tea because uh, if you drinking tea, you ha you can reduce your 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 risk to attach to or, or contact to nicotine. So that is good way. Well, we've uh, run out of time, so I have one last question. What do you think, Dr. Ho, is going to be the movement towards the use of tea? as a natural way of addressing many uh, diseases, mm -hmm. uh, cancers, but also obesity and other types of diseases. And we have to be very quick. Yeah, uh, maybe I think that we can drink tea everywhere in, em in any kind of way if you convenience. For example, you can take a tea bag and then you can prepare uh, by a bottle and water anywhere so you can uh, easily to prevent prevent uh, many kind of disease through uh, tea component. That's a good one. So you recommend people drinking tea? Of course. Well, thank you, Dr. Uh, Yun So Ho, is a distinguished uh, professor and researcher, uh, director of the Graduate Institute of Medical Science, College of Medicine, Taipei Medical University. And thank you for being with us. It was great. This is firstgov.gov, where we're obsessed with getting you government information. Brand new student loan applications on the site, baby. This calls for a celebration. Here's your uncle. So in the end, it was either take the astronaut gig or come work here. What can I say? Duty called. Dude, that's my cop. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, I'm pretty sure that's Sam's cop. Oh, sorry? Yeah. No. Sam's? No. Just log no. on or email us Thank and you. get right. what you need. C, change of address form. That's how it's done. D, driver's license renewal. Oh. E, uh, uh, e, emailing social security information. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, we'll allow it. Mm. All right, that. Yeah. What are those? Government surplus cars for auction. You posted those online last time. No, you did. I'm posting them online this time. For all your government information, oh. firstgov.gov. Oh, what have we got here? Sometimes you feel tired. You can't seem to lose those extra pounds off your midsection. And your joints hurt when you take the stairs. Well, you're getting older. But I'm happy to say that there's some simple things we can do to keep you happy and healthy for years to come. We can also lower your risk for some serious diseases the older population is often subject to. Proper nutrition is more important than ever. Your body has changed, you know. Not as many treats. A basic exercise plan, lots of walks and fresh air, and most importantly, come and see me for twice yearly checkups to help ensure the best possible quality of life. Now, how does that sound? <laughs> Good boy. Improve the quality of life for your elderly pet. Schedule twice yearly checkups that include preventive care and regular lab work. A message from the veterinary members of the American Animal Hospital Association. I helped turn my child's public school into a whole new kind of school. One with a curriculum that really motivates kids. One that has extended hours, six days a week, year round. With loads of academic, cultural, and recreational activities. 
has support services like medical and dental right there. A school where parents' involvement is encouraged, where teachers have more time to teach, and students are excited about learning. There's just one problem. My child doesn't ever want to come home. Call 1-877-LOVE-TO-LEARN. We're back to the Inside Scoop Emerald Planet. Here again, your host, Dr. Sam. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock, President and Executive Director of Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We're coming to you live from downtown in Taipei, Taiwan, looking as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices. One of the countries that we're looking to feature right now is the country of Australia. And when you think of tea culture and a, a tea production, we don't normally think of Australia of uh, being in that category. But I have someone sitting right beside me is a uh, mistress of tea, if I can put it that way. This is Sharon Johnston, and she's the founder of Australian Tea Masters. I think it's absolutely fascinating that you're in tea and in Australia, of all places, where I have lived. I love the country and the people. But I never thought about the production of tea in Australia. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing there, the blending and all those things. And then what we really want to get into is the fact that you've developed an international curriculum for tea. So congratulations. On and welcome to the Emerald Planet. Thank you very much. Yeah, so um, we actually do produce a bit of tea in Australia. We actually have uh, production from northern Queensland down on our borders a little bit, down into New South Wales and into Victoria. So we do produce some tea. I think that's absolutely amazing. And surprisingly enough, actually, we produce a little bit of tea in the state of Virginia, where I'm from. And when I say that, people just laugh and <laughs> think I'm really pulling a joke. It's absolutely true. They do have some tea gardens, and they really are tea gardens, not tea plantations, as you would think. But looking at the, the work that got you started in tea, you have a corporate background traveling all over the world. Of course, now you're traveling all over the world again, but in a different vein. But tell us about getting established in the tea business and what led you into now more and more into education? Um, yeah, when I was living overseas, obviously being in my corporate world, I had um, I traveled a lot of countries, uh, 24 to be exact. And um, over that period of time, every time you had a business meeting, they would get broken down with uh, tea or coffee first. So I got to experience a lot of different teas from around the world. And that made me more interested and then realized that we really didn't know that much about tea. So I decided I wanted a quieter life, and then I'm, I'd get into the tea business. So looking at that, uh, tell us how you established, because I know you got into the mixing, blending, uh, trying unique flavors, and that really more or less just whetted your appetite to learn more about tea, to really explore tea, but do it on a global basis, which many people don't do. They're either born into the culture, they stay with what they have, but you actually went out and you started gathering a tea culture that you could do into Australia and then take it back to the world. Tell us about that transformation. Yeah, I think the big thing was that I started to um, go to the different countries. I, I, well I wanted to learn about tea. And when I realized that there was not many places you could learn about tea going back, you know, five years ago, um, I went over to America, I had a look at the tea courses and I actually did a small course there and decided that we could do a whole lot better. So I took six months out, started going over to Sri Lanka using some of my connections around from my corporate world and uh, I actually did manufacturing processes and uh, developed some training curriculum. That was my basis to start with. But looking at the, the blending of tea, you, you told me that you actually have this company that does this. Tell us how that really has helped to solidify what you learn when you're traveling around the globe by actually doing this uh, blending and adding the flavors and all that, and then how to incorporate that into the educational materials. Because it seems like you've hit on something that's really needed because there's about 15 countries being represented here, 
and none of them really have an educational curricula for about T and for T in their own country. No, I think there was a big hole in the marketplace and uh, just the fact that I, uh, first of all, developed the tea mastery program and then uh, tea sommelier, we got it government accredited. Um, then I decided um, blending was a big thing. I noticed there's a big hole in the market for how to blend tea. So I'd always had a great interest in Ayurvedic medicine, Chinese medicine, um, blending of herbals, botanicals, and then I decided, okay, it's time we have to concentrate on some blending. So uh, I started putting a curriculum together with that, and uh, so now we have a blending course as well. So that's which has um, been lucky enough to teach farmers in Korea um, how to blend and uh, using their own botanicals and their own locally grown herbs, and uh, it's just grown from there. So yeah, it's been a great uh, journey so far. Well, I know the Australians are very adventuresome people because I meet them all over the place, and uh, quite honestly, in some very odd locations. Uh, and they just seem to fit in everywhere, just like you do. So here you're going back to a classical tea culture. Korea has, has a tea culture for some 5,000 years. You're an Australian. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is just very interesting, this mix of going in, because you've repeatedly gone back to Korea, which really leads me back to this thing, which is so intriguing is that you're from Australia. You've developed this in the last five years but yet you're hitting very ancient societies that really did not have a way to teach about tea. Why do you think that's the case, that, uh, that you're bringing something brand new to cultures that are five, 6,000 years into teaism? Yeah, I think the biggest uh, thing for me, which was great, was being invited to be on the China Tea Experts Committee. And uh, which is only a group of five, and uh, we judge, uh, yeah, regularly. And I get invited to China, and that was a big thing. And I think just because probably I'm a Westerner, and it was so unique to have somebody <laughs> from Australia on a China Tea Experts Committee, I uh, do a lot of judging around the world. I'm on the advisory board for the Tea Masters Cup, so there's a lot of uh, interest out there and trying to make tea somewhat trendy i think and that's where the interest is i i follow along the way of the coffee path so um what coffee's doing we sort of replicate in tea yeah looking at that and this is the whole thing and as i told you i'm a, a master water Thank taster <laughs> which is uh you know people find very interesting <laughs> that there's such a thing as you know a master water taster and actually it took two years to do that and uh drinking a lot of water and being around the water culture because this is evolving at the same time as the world is drying out there's becoming more and more interest in different waters so as we see the expansion of tea and all these uh, new varieties and even nine tea uh, bushes if you will the varieties are now becoming, you know, various trees, the leaves from various trees, even grasses are being used as teas. Why do you think now is this great interest in an expansion as far as tea is concerned? I think health. Health is the big thing. I think uh, whatever country you look at, there's something good that they offer. And uh, I think just exploring that and being able to give people alternatives, because not everyone can have caffeine. And obviously, if you have tea, it's got ca some caffeine in it. You know, it varies. Um, but having the herbal tisanes is um, an option. And I think people are just as interested in that. It, it does have a big place in the market. So overall, I think there's a good combination between, you know, uh, herbals and teas go well together. Yeah, and this is something I discovered here and uh, spent quite some time with this young man who is a graduate of the Agricultural University here in Taiwan. And they have what's called uh, strong camphor, the camphor tree. And they have developed a whole line of teas around the camphor uh, leaf. And so they're uh, adding various uh, botanicals uh, to that to give various uh, flavors uh, to that, either to soften or strengthen the, the camphor leaf, which is very high in all kinds of antioxidants and other health benefits. So it's just interesting how uh, you had almond milk, <laughs> now <laughs> there's camphor tea. And it's just interesting, these mixes. Now, what are you finding as far as when you're going out and offering these seminars? I know you've done some, I think, in India, Sri Lanka, again, very strong tea cultures, Korea, of course, uh, maybe even Japan. What are you finding 
the reception in these societies to uh, this new movement towards education in tea? I think people are interested in now because it's, it, to move forward with tea, we have to modernise it. And I think um, you know the ceremonial practices of the countries are great, but that needs to be a bit fun for young ones you know so I think uh, trying to make tea uh, if we look at coffee and how coffee's grown around the world and the interest in coffee and the single origins people are now starting to say gosh there's the same thing out there in tea and so that's what created the interest. I'm going to uh, move and drop my head a little bit but this is a copy of your book and it's a very complicated uh, colored wheel on the front of this and tell us a little bit about this Wheel of Tea and a little bit about your book, and that's about going to end our conversation. Okay, so the Tea Wheel came about because I realized that when we began to do the training and, and build our curriculum, there was no actual flavor wheel for tea. So we went about, it took us two years, and uh, we developed the world's first flavor wheel for tea. That is now being used at some major companies around the world, and which we're very proud of. And uh, on top of that um, came our tea course in, uh, a course in tea sommelier, uh, which was government accredited in Australia. And that was very hard work as well because we have very tough education uh, levels over there. So, yeah, so now we have tea introduced into the hospitality sector in Australia as well. Now looking at the book, what would be some of the major topics you hear for... I'm going to speak into the microphone. What would be uh, some of the major topics that you would have uh, in this book that would uh, maybe uh, increase the interest of viewers uh, both domestically and around the globe? Well, I think the book is based, it, it's a lot of things, a little bit about a lot of things in tea. It's not, uh, it's not going to make, it's not a Bible on tea, but it gives uh, people an interest. We've got things on production, types of tea, brewing methods. Some there's uh, You can do gong fu cha, you can do the Korean tea ceremony, Japanese tea ceremony. We've done some different types of tea. Uh, chai, herbals, there's a lot in there. So, um, yeah, we've tried to put a lot of things just to get the interest happening. We have about 15 seconds. What do you see for the growth and acceptance of tea and various teas in societies all across the globe? Um, I, th I think, look, the health is driving it. Everyone's going to realize that tea can make you feel better. You know, it's a, it's a good replacement for lots of other bad beverages. And it has a, you don't need to put sugar in it. There's some awesome flavors in it. And uh, it's an exciting beverage to experience. It's absolutely fantastic. Well, this is Sharon Johnston. Uh, she's the founder of Australia Tea Masters. She is a tea master in herself. And we thank you for being with us as we're in Taipei, Taiwan, as we look around the globe. It's coming right to your neighborhood. And when it does, you may be surprised. It's your social security statement of your benefits, and it's going to help you plan your financial future. Your benefit statement will tell you how much social security you're eligible to receive and when you'll get it. Then you'll know how much you need to save for retirement because that's coming too. The future is in your hands. Choose to save. Some dreams are universal. Dreams that inspire us. Multiple sclerosis is a devastating disease that changes lives forever. The National MS Society does more for people with MS than any organization in the world. But we can't do it alone. To get involved, visit us online at nationalmssociety.org or call 1-800-FIGHT-MS. This is why we're here. Because nobody dreams of having multiple sclerosis. What's wrong with this picture? Half of young Americans can't locate economic powers like Japan and India. 20% can't even find the Pacific Ocean. Without geography, our children aren't ready for the world. Geography is everywhere. It's incredible creatures. Rhythm. Fashion. Flavor. It's economics and politics. 
It's change. Understanding connections between people and places is critical in the 21st century. That's why we created MyWonderfulWorld.org. Go there now for your free parent and teacher action kits and give our kids the power of global knowledge. Because kids who understand our world today can succeed in it tomorrow. to the Inside Scoop Emerald Planet. Here again, your host, Dr. Sam. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock, coming to you live from downtown Taipei, Taiwan. As we're looking around the globe, and we're in the world, looking for the new technologies, services, products in 144 different nations. And we're here looking at organic food and fruits and all types of vegetables that are being used to create the new green diet and at the same time to incorporate something that's very ancient in Asia, tea, that's actually becoming a new food and a new beverage as we look towards to increasing health and decreasing obesity and other negative issues as it relates to processed foods. And someone who was doing extensive research in this whole area and particularly with a focus on tea, is Dr. Mari Maeda Yamamoto. Uh, she is the director of the Food Foundation Division, Food Research Institute of the National Agriculture and Food Research Organization, NARO, of Japan. And Mari, welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you um, for inviting me. Well, we're very glad to have you. I love your energy and also the information that you've been sharing uh, this time that we've been together here in Taipei, Taiwan. Tell us a little bit about your organization and its importance to the people and especially the food of Japan. My institute, my organization that had the work to uh, cultivate the uh, agricultural products, many agricultural products, such as rice, barley, uh, soybean, uh, uh, back, uh, buckwheat, and so on. Well, I was actually, when I was a youth, I uh, know buckwheat because uh, it was something in my area of southwest Virginia. And then I lived in Kofu in Yamanashiken, and as you know, the Takada Shingen, who was a very famous warlord of that era, uh, produced great quantities of buckwheat instead of rice. So I thought that was a very interesting history. So Japan has a long history of tea and a long history of really uh, being involved in organic foods because until the Meiji Restoration, Almost everything was done organically. So uh, what is Japan's movement now as we're going towards 2050 back towards more organic foods for its population? Uh, in Japan, the, the for organic foods, the, the we uh, use the, the green tea or... Uh, Powdered green tea for uh, lowering cholesterol and uh, re reducing obesity. And my work is um, for anti-allergy effect and so on. So you really are looking at tea, and I, when I lived in Japan and still have studied the Japanese tea ceremony from the Omote Senke school, which I enjoyed very much, but I learned about this delicate balance that you've had traditionally between tea and food, tea and uh, various sweets, which are used in the tea ceremony, so why this emphasis uh, is expanding on the green tea in the Japanese diet? Oh, 
green tea is special tea we think uh, because the black tea uh, contain the um, catechin uh, no 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 uh, dynamization of catechin but the uh, uh, green tea contains many uh, mono monomer uh, catechin monomers the that the Especially, EGCG epigallocatechin gallate uh, has a uh, um, big uh, physiological effect for human health. The we think the EGCG and another catechin uh, is useful for our health. Now, the Japanese society has always been a firm believer in the health, both the mental and physical health, of green tea. I mean, you're world famous for green tea. What is special about the variety or varieties of green tea in Japan that really lends itself to scientific research that says green tea really is good for your health. Japanese green tea is uh, different from another country because uh, uh, at first the picket the practice um, tea leaves uh, we um, steam the at the foot that the the for um, inactivated uh, peripheral oxygen. The the that uh, um, steaming uh, tea leaves uh, has uh, a special aroma and uh, um, another many component. The we think that the the manufacturing method is very important. That the 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 uh, catechins and theanines and caffeine and uh, we think um, another prephenol such as carotene, uh, mesotene uh, and so on. The, the component is useful uh, for our health in Japan we think. Now, looking at Japan as a landmass, it's a very young country, even though the society classically is quite old. Uh, and you have much of the soil there is volcanic ash or somehow related to volcanic activity. Right. And so what is special about the soil in Japan that gives all of these special qualities to the green tea itself, which are so helpful for humans in Japan. Yes, the soil uh, for green tea uh, need the uh, acidic soil and the uh, special minerals. The we think the the special mineral uh, such as aluminum, the and so on, the the that the aluminum uh, is very special um, and in Japan. The we think that the mineral is good for health, useful for health. We think. Now, why is that particular uh, metal uh, and? Uh, mineral so prevalent in Japan and does that come from the the mix of the types of soil along with the volcanic uh, ash throughout tell us a little bit about that and how you were able to discover that particular mineral in the green tea yes the uh, Japanese green tea uh, contains the uh, special mineral uh, from vol volcanic soil. That that the, that mineral uh, 
is um, very um, useful to green tea and for human health regimes. Now, looking at uh, the diet of the Japanese people, uh, traditionally it's been very high in uh, vegetables and fruit, uh, very low in meat, except for uh, fish, maybe chicken, uh, but uh, very low in red meats. Uh, since uh, World War II, of course, the diet has changed dramatically. Uh, much greater use of uh, red meat proteins uh, in the diet. How has that uh, affected or impacted uh, the general health of the Japanese people by introducing uh, more of these animal proteins to the diet? We think the important ingredient is the fish, uh, pro uh, especially protein, the fish and soybean protein. The Japanese, many Japanese uh, eat many soybean. The soybean protein uh, is useful for human health. And uh, um, I think the uh, important thing is the mixture, the, the soup and the many dishes made from uh, vegetable and fish and uh, soybean and green tea. Uh, after meal, we drink green tea. This is very important. Well, having uh, lived and in Japan and visited dozens of times, uh, everywhere I used to go when I first went there some years ago, was uh, always having access to green tea, and then there was a movement to the coffee culture in Japan, which is quite high. And I think we've about run out of time. How has that impacted the diet? And we have to be quick. Mm, uh, green <coughs> tea. Uh, compare with coffee. Uh, coffee is good, I think, but uh, uh, green tea is greater than the... Uh, Thank you, Mari, for being with us, and thank you for being with us as we create the Kimball Planet. I need a job. Necesito trabajo. I would like to speak English better. Me gustaría hablar inglés mejor. I want to be a U.S. citizen. Quisiera ser ciudadano de los Estados Unidos. For over 35 years. Por más de 35 años. The Hispanic Committee of Virginia has been serving our community. El Comité Hispano de Virginia ha estado sirviendo a nuestra comunidad. Job training and placement. Capacitación. Ayuda para conseguir trabajo. Education for children and adults. Educación para niños y adultos. Immigration, naturalization, and medical referrals. Ayuda para los procesos de inmigración y naturalización y orientación sobre médicos are a small part of what we do. son solo una pequeña parte de lo que hacemos. For help, information, or to volunteer, para ayuda, información o para ofrecerse como voluntario contact the Hispanic Committee of Virginia. comuníquese con el Comité Hispano de Virginia Helping everyone participate more fully in American society. ayudando a todos a participar plenamente en la sociedad norteamericana. Did you notice if you were missing half your kidney function? According to the National Kidney Foundation, 20 million people have chronic kidney disease and 20 million more may be at risk and not even know it. Anyone with high blood pressure, diabetes, or family history of chronic kidney disease is at risk. Early diagnosis is vitally important. To get the whole story, talk to your doctor and visit the National Kidney Foundation at kidney.org or call for a free brochure. Because when it comes to chronic kidney disease, 
might not know the half. The toxic fumes from this meth lab are seeping into Jamie's sinus cavity. Ammonia vapors invade her throat. Toxic gases fill her lungs. Jamie's body is deteriorating. And she doesn't even know it. Jamie, dinner. So, who has the drug problem now? Find out how meth affects you at drugfree.org slash To the Inside Scoop Emerald Planet. Here again, your host, Dr. Sam. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We're coming to you live from downtown Taipei, Taiwan, as we look around the globe, being in the world, at new technologies, new innovation as it relates to very traditional products. One of those particular products, which is something that's uh, called the tea culture, of course, has been around for many millennia. And we have someone who comes from a society where tea is a very important part of not only just the culture, but also the daily food uh, for uh, youth, adults, and the elderly to impact their health and at the same time to decrease the stress and many other issues that we face in modern day society. This is Dr. Uh, Pian Korn. Uh, Chun Chai Tai Kun is a director of the Tea Institute at the Meifeng Luang University. And welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Mm -hmm. Hi. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, tell us a little bit about your university where it's located, uh, the number of students, and then we'll talk a little bit about your research and the impact of your research on Thai society. TFT still under corporate with the Mel Falun University, and Mel Falun University is located in Chiang Rai province at the northern part of the Thailand. In this area, it's a good area to planted the high qualities of the tea and also this area has a big tea plantations and also a lot of the tea factories in this area uh, for the tea institute of Mephalong University we emphasis for this uh, tea institute to do the research and also the academic service we do and work with the tea factory to improve the qualities and also try to develop the new product to serve to the new market. On some occasions, we found some problems, so tea institute help to the tea product tea processor to solve the problem. And what uh, what the research that we are going to to do the research now uh, now today we interested about from the farms to until the market first of all the good qualities I mean the good qualities of the product should come from the good raw material so this is very important that the tea farming how to do the best tea farming how to treat how to the fertilizer and how to take care of your tea, tea plantations and the Chiang Rai province this is a good place to plant the tea tree in terms of like a, a produce the organic tea no chemical use by uh, because this this area is a good weather good climate to produce the raw material yeah, looking at this, I know that you uh, explained to me earlier that you're looking at rice, the various uh, products that are uh, very famous in uh, Thailand, both for use by uh, the Thai consumers themselves, but also you have a tremendous export market of uh, various products. But going to the tea, 
What uh, made you want to go in this research of looking at tea, not only just as food itself, but also a way to maybe address disease, uh, obesity, uh, and other kinds of uh, diseases that now are becoming more and more prevalent in modern day society? Okay, for in Thailand, the tea is is not economic uh, agricultural produce when compared with the rice. But when you look uh, at the value of the tea, uh, this is a give uh, more money to the tea farmer if you produce the good quality of the tea. The premium qualities of the tea, you can get a good price of the tea. In Chiang Rai province, it is the biggest area to produce the good qualities of tea. The tea farmer can earn a lot of the money uh, from the tea. Tea plantation do their product to export to the foreign country. In Thailand, around 70% the tea product we export to the other country and the 30% is uh, consumed in, Thai in, in, in country. Uh, we have the uh, status back background about the tea production uh, compared with the Asian country. I'm very surprised that the first one is Vietnam has the highest production. The second one is Indonesia. Thailand is the third one. We're talking about that. If you are, if you want to go to the first, the first par, um, high productions, it's not necessary for the Thai industry. But you should to focus about how to produce the good or premium qualities of the tea. This is a better way for the tea factories in Thailand because um, I think the niche market or the special market, we need the good qualities of tea, especially the organic tea. Now looking at tea and, and being part of the diet and part of the culture of Thailand, uh, you're talking about the farmers being able to earn higher incomes from cultivating tea. And so uh, is uh, tea culture among the farmers something that's fairly new or this is something that's traditional but they want to expand production? I would like to uh, let you know about the background of the tea in Thailand. In the past, we have the Assam tea to produce the local tea that we call Miang. Miang is a fermented tea, this is a local, local tea. And the tea farmer don't know how to use the tea juice to produce as a dry tea. Nowadays, they know that for the tea tree, you can use the one bath tea leaf to produce the dry tea leaf. And the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth leaf, you can use the fermented tea or we call miang. So it means that all of the all of the part of the tea tree, you can use everything to produce and make the money by their own. Now, uh, looking at the uh, tea culture and tea society in uh, Thailand, and looking at it from its medical purposes, and from the standpoint of how it in, uh, decreases stress, increases the sociability, which is something that surrounds uh, the tea culture. How do you see modern Thai people accepting or looking at tea, which may be different than their grandparents or great-grandparents? Um, you mean that for the, for consume the, I, I mean that you, you mean that the Thai people consume the tea tree? Oh, I, I, I don't, I am not. Why does, how are young people looking at tea versus the elders? Oh, okay. For the Thai people, the cultural is, if we drink a hot tea, this is a, uh, this is a appropriate for the older people, but for the teenager, for the young people, they would like to consume 
butter tea are ready to drink because the taste is good. Uh, the Thai people like to consume the sweetness. So if your tea is has a bitterness, a strong bitterness, they don't add that product. So the product in Thailand, if we can categorize, uh, depending on the consumer, that, that the consumer want, you should know that what is the best in Thai beer for each category. If the teenager or the younger people, so if you should choose serve the ready to drink or the bottle tea, and for the old, er, older people, you should serve the hot tea. Now, looking at the uh, bottled tea, uh, because we're in Taipei, Taiwan, it is a tea culture, a very ancient tea culture, and here many people drink the bottled tea regardless of age because of convenience, but there's no sugar, and we know that sugar is not necessarily good for the body, uh, particularly high amounts of sugar. So uh, in Thailand, uh, do they put sh sugar into the tea? And if yes, how is that impacting the health of the younger Thai consumer? For the Thai consumer, they like to drink uh, sweet tea. So this is a reason this is not the health benefit for the teenager. So we should to encourage them and give the information that when you drink a tea don't drink a lot don't if you want to drink the uh, a tea uh, ready to drink it is very convenient but if you drink too much it will help you ha uh, it will make a uh, you can become fatter but if you can avoid to drink uh, the ready to drink no as you can it's more healthier then you drink uh, the tea with the sugar. So now that they in Thailand try to use the sweetener substitute with the sugar. This is an alternative way for the Thai consumer. Uh, we have to be quick. What do you see for the growth of the use of tea in Thailand over the next 5, 10, 15 years? I think this product or the tea drink is very important. Now they take people alert or realize that the tea is a good drink and provide the health benefit for them. But the Thai consumer should be realized that, that you should drink a hot tea if you want to add sugar to you. Not to drink too much because it can reach And thank you for being with us. It's come come from you from Taipei, Taiwan as we create the Emerald Planet.